let's see, let's grab, grab a link to the HackMD just in case somebody doesn't have it. There you go. I think we have uh, probably about as many as we're going to get. Um, did you want to go ahead and uh, finish up your discussion, uh, Ron, uh, automatic content discovery? Uh, I mean, so I had gone ahead and updated the PR um, and uh, made some changes based on some discoveries from Docker distribution um, and provided a reference implementation, uh, which is what Lasker suggested as the next step for getting it merged into the spec. And I wanted to see if um, people had anything more to say or you know, whatever. Oh, do you want to, I guess, go on a presentation and give a, a quick summary and make sure everybody understands? Uh, sure. I mean, I don't think that presenting the, uh, sure. the, the thing is necessarily the most um, best idea, uh, just because it's a lot of text. Um, but to, I guess, restate, um, the original issue was described as a mechanism to deduplicate uploads in a registry between repositories um, because what we found is uh, there are many common layers between our uh, repositories that end up getting duplicate uploads when we do something in Ubuntu upgrade, let's say. Right. Um, and this literally results in, you know, um, like a, a non-negligible number of redundant uploads. Um, in order to potentially avoid the situation, uh, one idea might be to um, go ahead and allow for uh, arbitrary deduplication. Or, or, and, and we kind of had this capability already in the mount API. Um, and there were some ideas if, if, if we could do this in situation, we, we mean we, everyone, like the OCI community. Uh, Adrian, is that, uh, so the, um, in like speaking very specifically as a representative of Netflix, I am speaking about our production registries, um, our very specific use cases that we have one registry that people develop out of, um, and then a bunch of registries people will go ahead and deploy into. So with the cross mount, what happens is P Docker doesn't know or whatever the development tool that we use uh, doesn't know that those other repositories have been pushed to all those registries that are the production registries. So it can't, it doesn't know that it can do a cross mount here. Um, and um, in this situation, uh, we were like, is there a way to do this safely in a way it's secure uh, where there is an access model um, that has, well, any kind of access model, right? Any kind of access restrictions between repositories, um, especially without disclosure, right? Of, yeah. of, of secure information. Um, so we attenuated the initial issue uh, to, instead of doing that, for repositories that do not care about information leakage, about knowledge of blobs, um, allowing the Mount API to perform automatic discovery of blobs as opposed to requiring that the user know which repository to mount the blob from. Um, 
and all that really required was dropping the from uh, in the mount uh, API. And uh, this is a really nice uh, backwards compatibility effect because in the specification, it says if from fails, or if mount fails, just continue to do a normal upload. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a rough summary of where we're at uh, with the PR. Um, John, you had done a review on this. Derek, do you have any, any thoughts? How is it doing the, the permission? ACL uh, stuff. I, I saw something about like, oh, if the registry or the repositories allows for kind of sharing that information, but, but how is that defined from a registry perspective? So the OCI spec talks nothing at all about access control models. And sure. I, don't I, don't, I don't think that I should write about security, um, but I believe that- Not in, in the, the spec, yeah. In the PR, it is fine in the commit to uh, strongly suggest that users do not do this in a security model where they are trying to keep the knowledge of blobs confidential uh, between different repositories. Or um, authentication or, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If, I mean, I, it, it, you can do this with any auth authentication authorization model in theory um that i know of but it's just really ugly to do it and maintain 100 percent confidentiality yeah, um a use case that we have and i i, I like this pr because we already implemented um is that they're like gcr has a s very small set of like well-known maintained public projects um so we know that those are always accessible. And so we can look those up uh, and we don't care to leak the information that they do or do not exist because we're only looking in these public spaces. Um, and so this, this lets us uh, short circuit like lots and lots of traffic that would otherwise have to be uploaded for a thing that's known public and is easily accessible. Um, so I think that's a kind of similar application. You, you don't have to think about the overall registry auth model if you have any concept of like public things. Right. Okay. So we're not we're not going to boil the ocean, but yeah, I think I think we've got a similar fix in, in container D, right, Kurt? To have some trusted registries, for example. Uh, okay. Not sure. Well, from the, I mean, what's the impact from the client perspective here, if any, that a client is expected to handle an auth code that possibly, if it went down a different code path, I guess. I, I, mean, I think if there's any the auth issue, you would get a 202 response and the client's expected to just do the upload itself. Like this is a um, yeah. like optimistic uh, you know, mount. If, if I can do it, otherwise you give me a 202 and I'll continue. I think that there might also be a small bug it's unrelated to this um, where if the blob exists, it doesn't give a 201. Um, but um, that's unrelated to this, but it should give a, a 201 if it already exists from in, in that specific repository. I don't, I don't see Jason here, but it would probably be a good idea to, to see if you, if you had a proof of concept, if we could check out the uh, test cases and see if this, you know, loosening this would actually work okay, uh, you know, the test cases. Uh, so, I mean, there's test cases in the uh, attached reference implementation. Um, it's not plumbed through to the outside uh, okay. configuration of Docker distribution, which I can do if you want, but... Um, okay, fair, fair enough. Yeah, I was trying to figure out how we could, if, if we modify the distribution specification in this way, would we have to modify the test cases? that we use currently to, to verify the, the registry? Oh, I mean, we'd certainly want, so it, it seems like there's two, th this, I don't know if the conformance test is actually very good on this. We would want to add this to the conformance tests, um, but we shouldn't need to, like we should, we should add the, does the blob already exist to the conformance tests? But I think that is a unrelated point to the uh, PR or to the, yeah, the PR. Right. Okay. Fair enough.
Okay, thanks. Let's see, what was next on the agenda? Or did anybody have any more, anybody have any questions or want to carry on this conversation? Sounds like uh, everyone's okay with this merging. I, I'm okay with the merging. I'm, I'm curious for the implementation on your side. Are you running your own client to implement this or is this just the first step and you're going to start going now upstream and start trying to get the builders to implement it? Yeah, I mean, the first step would be to get this merged into the distribution spec. Uh, getting this into Docker distribution should be relatively easy. I mean, other than the fact that there's like one one person reviewing PRs, it seems. Uh, and there's a massive back of, of PRs. Um, but um, the clients, you know, if you go ahead and merge this uh, into the spec, the client should be able to adopt it like tomorrow um, and the fallback behavior based on the specification should always uh, had, like be okay with registries that don't implement the, the new capability. Yeah, but my only concern with rollout there is like, I expect some registry returns a 4XX in this case where like, you didn't supply from, um, so I'm gonna bail. Uh, so a client may need some, you know, you know Ideally, right, everyone adopts this method, right? Because we can collapse the an existence check and like an op, uh, opportunistic deduplication and the, you know, I'm going to start uploading requests all into one. So we get rid of all these round trips, which is great. Um, but for that to happen, you, registries must return the correct thing. Otherwise, we're going to add an additional like, right. okay, head request, then try to mount even though I don't know where it's from. That fails. Okay, now I'll start an upload. Uh, that's, it, that's exactly it. That's sort of why I was saying maybe we need a test case here. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, so it, it's hard because you know registries and clients. We need to do this sequencing of things, but yeah. But I mean that registry would be non-conformant, right? Like the specification specifically says, and I think you wrote this, right? That says quite possible if it fails to upload, you know, <laughs> two hundred two. But uh, yes, the, the clients might have to handle bad registries. And it turns out I tried to implement this in a different registry. They did not correctly implement the fallback behavior for the from mount. Uh, so hence I went to distribution instead. Okay. It, it might be nice to write up, maybe not as part of the PR, but um, like how, how we expect the sequencing of rollout to work. Um, I think it's fair to, in the, in the details of the PR to, to talk about this sort of thing. And then maybe in the specification, you, you know, I just they could reference the PR itself, at, at, you know, for background information for why this change went in. Commit, get commit, please. Uh, okay, because yeah. agree, agree. GitHub is not super great. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. So, Phil and Vince, you have the floor. <laughs> Yeah, Vincent had um, image spec issue PR grooming, so. And I'm in a not a good place for that now. I've had a few <laughs> things come up and like literally was in the car trying to download Zoom and uh, get it on my phone again. Um, so I'm, I might have to put that, uh, put that off to an actual meeting like I said I would last week. Um, but I got, I got a couple of folks, you know, asked if I wanted to do any kind of Q&A on the throwing the flag email that I did and that it might just roll into the uh, kind of grooming piece, but um, I, I try my best to be clear sometimes, but um, if, if the email was confusing to anybody, uh, I'm welcome to take any questions right now, but hopefully the biggest thing is that uh, finding a way forward for all the folks that are involved and people who consider themselves lurking or otherwise bystanders that were in agreement that there, there are some changes that are needed. There are like existing things that we defend in the, you know, or have defended in the distribution and image spec. Uh, and otherwise that we're working towards kind of a common goal of having ways to work with all these different artifacts and, and everybody's on the same page. Um, 
but if you, I'll, I'll open it up for a minute. If anybody has any particular questions um, to ask now, um, I'll do my best to answer. And anybody else that's obviously can chime in. I don't see Dan on the meeting. Um, so I guess I'll yeah, I, don't know if, I don't know if Steve is going to be able to, uh, to join either. So he's, he's on vacation. Yeah, he's out of the office for a couple of days. It seems to me that, um, well, so I, I'm not speaking for Dan, but it seems to me that the purpose um, that what he was trying to accomplish with his uh, proposal, which is to add references, was a minimal change uh, to the spec. But I did not understand from your email, Vincent, whether that qualifies as a minimal change. Um, it's a good question. So. The, the 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 focus would be, and I think that's where like there are aspects of references in some of the threads that are happening, and even like branches that are happening in the artifacts repo to try and tease out what that would look like, and possibly even proof of concepts in different you know forks of the uh, distribution registry distribution code. Um, but they've, they're, they're large, and we're, I think one of the big things that we need to all the maintainers to be on the same page about is kind of decomposing those and breaking them down into incremental pieces so that it doesn't look like a substantially different kind of spec. Um, and so uh, it is my fault that we're all on the same page is that some of these like incremental pieces where we can focus on maybe the references aspect of it or making certain things more generic or not really generic, um, but still incremental pieces like the references conversation such that they can work their way back into the existing spec and effectively have, you know, some amount of like not breaking existing clients, but having like forward compatibility as well. And that those kind of things just take a level of review and sometimes even a, a review of a proof of concept that um, effectively they're, they're small enough or even this is this is something that you know historically even we got into nitpicky like would this be a v dot a v1 dot o dot you know next or would it be like a v1 dot one um where you could you know like semantic versioning really doesn't work well in the spec sense uh, but if it's like small and incremental enough, but it, it basically bolts onto what we already have and carries it forward, then I think that's fine. Uh, again, I, the spec is not frozen. You know, I can speak with whatever authority being just one of the maintainers, but the spec is not frozen. It just has to have enough review of the folks that have, um, you know, kind of like maintainership of it and otherwise are involved to say, yeah, that's an incremental change and we can like slowly add out this, this feature set without breaking what we already have in production. And it also enables us for future use cases. So yes, it very well might be small enough, incremental enough. Okay, thank you. Hmm. Oh, so I have a, actually I have a follow up. I forgot to ask. Sorry. Um, so, so Vincent, uh, does that do those conversations happen in these meetings, or is there going to be um, a separate forum for it? Yeah, that's you know we we almost have too many ways to communicate. Um, there's the Slack, there's the mailing list, there's the weekly chats, and then a lot of discussion happens, you know, diving into all the different issues and PRs. Um, sometimes it does help to have just kind of a working doc 
even sometimes those happen in hack and d or otherwise uh i think the thing that we all should you know work towards is maybe not brevity but just at least clarity of like how here's how the work's evolving if it's not all in one issue on a github issue like if it ends up having to track out the different conversations and they're related um maybe it's time for a doc or something else if they can be one-off conversations in a in a uh you know, like just working something through through asynchronous stuff like um email or slack that's fine um i love in-person conversations like there's there's times when these kind of chats are necessary just to work through specific topics uh or at least give time to something that isn't working in you know github prs and issues um and historically, we found that, you know, like sometimes things were just happening completely on GitHub issues, and that was fine. Sometimes they bubbled up into the general call, and sometimes we just had to set aside times for like, this is kind of like an image spec call or, you know, runtime spec call at the, you know, back in the day. I was like, no other maintainers really need to worry about joining if you don't want to. It's not a general call, but anybody's inv invited to sit and participate if they're interested in that particular topic. Um, and sometimes those are very, very useful just to like uh, really work on a, you know, a set agenda. So really whatever works best, Misha. Yeah, I prefer if we could get together. Um, maybe, maybe that can't happen just <laughs> yet, but uh, that would be nice. Um, you know, one, one thing we could do, Vince, I don't know what you think. We could, we could split this call up um, into, and you know, every other week is specifically targeting dot one extensions in this kind of area or some other scheduled you know pre pre-decided you know plan we, we another let's use this call next week to talk about you know what are the different options that we could use right modifying image spec adding a new manifest adding a reference you know whatever the various options are in and, and just or, or and, and get a and get enough maintainers in that call, um, as you say, you know they own the distribution spec, they own the the artifacts work that's going on, and the artifacts repo and the image repo. I think if we get a collection of, you know, maintainers there, we, we should be able to make some quicker decisions <laughs> about what would need to go into a dot two or you know or a v two and what. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I do, I do, I like, that's, that's one thing that I, you know, like, truly, for the, one of the big reasons that I'd say the spec is not frozen, is very much because, like, if we do, you know, discern, determine, like, this is fundamentally different, and it needs to be a V2, that, it, that doesn't mean that, like, like, I don't want to increase the burden on folks, like, that is keep things as incremental as possible, and that just takes, um, actually, some amount of consensus and sometimes like going back and reworking something um reworking some of the threads that we have is it was interesting this is a side topic but among some of the image spec maintainers we were chatting last night it didn't happen on the open channel even though i just said you know but okay. this is like, um that but it was kind of interesting because like Stephen day was piping in um he's not always very active but at least like he'll brainstorm some stuff um and he was citing some of the prs from like back in 2014 2015 era of some of the same stuff that we've like iterated on and like the same kind of proposals that had different different threads and we almost reached consensus before other things happened um right. and it's, it's so it's like none of these are new ideas and i think we've got enough lessons learned we just actually have to uh get down to like, actually the technical technical details you know, implications of it and just work through it incrementally. And I think that's that's the best way forward. Yep, with the right people. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, getting Stephen Day in here would be amazing, right? Just a lot of history on it. Cool. So so what so what do you think? Just all the maintainers do, do some kind of a, a doodle or something and we get try to get a call going? Maybe on a different you know, different time schedule. Oh, I, I like kind of a maintainer cadence. That would be. Uh, 
Sure, I like I like doing those things ad hoc, but I, I do think it needs to happen. So that's that, I want that to happen for the image spec sooner than later. Um, okay. Is I'm just, just saying, a... as far as like not setting up the cadence, is, is all. Yeah, okay. Caden. I mean, you, you need you need an initial meeting to decide the cadence. <laughs> I you know meeting for a meeting, right? But you. <laughs> I think that's what people are asking for. I think I wasn't the only person. Did, what I think that might be what niche. What what's that next step? How how is it going to happen? Where is it going to happen? Some somehow that has to happen, right? Decide where we're going to be discussing this. In the image spec, it's fine. Sounds like he agrees. Oh, she agrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nisha, you're starting to ask another question. Sorry. Oh, well, I was going to ask uh, if this uh, maintainers meeting is open to other folks who are interested, but it sounds like it's... No, 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 no. Nisha, you have to be there, please. <laughs> <laughs> You've been asking for this for years. We have to, we have to let you in on it. Yeah, no, I, did, I didn't mean, I meant at least the maintainers. So, so that there's you know, some... some sometimes sometimes the, the inverse happens where we have really good discussion and not enough uh, maintainers on the call and that's frustrating. That, yeah, that's that's what I meant. Thank you for that acknowledgement, Mike. I, I think the the federal government has acknowledged your emphasis on this area. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, and, yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why we're all here. <laughs> Nisha, you were right. Thank you, United You're States welcome. Federal Government. Cool. Any other questions on 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 that? Um yeah, I, I'm kind of curious like how does this uh change the sort of working group model that we've been talking about because that that seems like yep. a solution that was also a, designed to address that same thing yeah. it's almost in the same vein of it because i think some of the some of the pieces that we're trying to reconcile is that uh even like with the artifacts working group and some of these prs that become kind of proposals proposal level like what to what extent does you know a proposal affecting multiple specs and or is it a breaking change or whatnot like so ensuring that something has that kind of level of review was part of the problem we recently had a tob call about putting in a, a working group model so it's, it's all in the same vein it's just i think part of this is even going to be kind of like retroactively saying like this actually should have had better scoping or review or whatnot what was the success and all this kind of stuff um so that's kind of a, a growth pain that we'll have to just go back and kind of figure that out of what would have been success criteria and otherwise and making sure that all the things are reconciled. Um, the working group, I just chatted with uh, Amy Scavarda Perrin this afternoon um, when, I, when you talk, when asking of, about the subject line email thing. Anyhow, she said that there is, they, from the TOB call we had, they had sent off and gotten some like working group, you know, wording put together. And there's a few like feedback that we have on that. Um, she's got some updates to post. We should have something official about the like working group model in general. Um, all this is really just saying that like we're, we're looking to adhere to something that will kind of guide these conversations on an ongoing basis. So it's, it's very much in the same vein. Great. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the, I don't know if other people feel this way, but one of the things that I have been struggling with finding a place to contribute, um, where it seems like we have several PRs that have been proposed, uh, but then there's no real place for the respective owners of those PRs and other people who are interested to actually iterate on anything. Uh, and so instead we just kind of uh, make comments and you know, have DM conversations and then cause you all to have to send emails and it'd be nice to get a place where we can, uh, you know, iterate on the, on the proposal that allows us all to merge onto something that doesn't necessarily mean that we have like 
made anything final yet. Right, like a sub branch. If you, you, could, will. you could call it a branch, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I definitely think part of working groups is is establishing a more formal way for that to happen. Um, but I, I think, you know, even in the discussion we were just having about meeting, who needs to be there, like, I think the interesting twist is that what's being worked on today is not like a single change to a single thing. It's like, you know, you've got people are working with registries that potentially need modifications and to really try and end to end, you know, uh, attempt to like validate a, a certain proposal is, is crossing like multiple repos. So, uh, you know, there's solutions for that, but I hopefully part of what working group gives us is a way to like set that up in a way that there's one spot to go mess around, you know, create branches, you know, create scripts to pull all the right things and build it and test it. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the, one of the complexities of like not making a ton of progress here is like you said, Michael, like it, it's not having that kind of centralized, like, Hey, this is our playground while we like figure out if these proposals make sense or work together or break my registry or your registry or this tool or that tool. Thanks. Yeah, like like Vincent said, like uh, you know, not not to throw lawyers under the bus, but <laughs> like you know, we want to bring that to to reality as soon as we can. It's but you know, we Vincent and I both talked to Amy and you know, we need the next respin of that language. So hopefully we can finalize it and vote on it. And it's obviously taken longer than what we had hoped uh, to bring it about. But I, I think, you know, I think we can start the wheels turning on some of this without officially having that, I think is what we're trying to say. Yeah, just a couple of phone calls to get, get some stuff kicked off. And that'll help too to create the work group because we'll know who's the most interested. Right. Okay. All right. Good questions, everybody. Um, I don't have anything else to add right now. So I'm not. Uh, if, if you do have any questions, you can ping me on the general channel or otherwise. So. Um, happy to do literally whatever it takes to keep things rolling, and uh, it really is a reminder that like it's it's funny even when OCI was getting formed, and back in the days of like CNCF and like people wanting to ensure that there was like a governance model or in place or otherwise, and having opinions in both directions. That one of the things that OCI was literally founded on was a very a very open governance model and ensuring that no one company or whatever can have too much of a sway and you know like it's and time's been cumbersome and it's also meant that decisions really did require more of a consensus than ever before and um i think uh, i think we see that and some sometimes people say it's like hard to come to a, a decision or whatever in oci um but to the other side other token like it was also put that way to protect that there wouldn't be particular players get in and swing it one way or the other. And we've seen that and it's like been the benefit of it. So, um, um, you know, the lawyer, lawyers under the bus, they've, they've helped us with good wording and we've actually been able to hold up pretty true to that. And I think the community is the better for it. So um, I'm glad you're all here and asking questions and we'll, we'll continue carrying it all forward. Thanks for phoning in from somewhere, Vincent. <laughs> All right, let's say people can get 20 minutes back to the day. Uh, I guess, Derek, if you want to stay on the line and maybe hash this out. Sure, yeah, we can continue discussing that. Yeah, I'm just going through. Um, so there's a this 
change also should affect the detail that MD. Um, and I'm just trying to think of if we were going to add an FAQ. Detail. I think MD. it's might be worthy of it considering it's like a point release change. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. I did not take into account the detail on MD. I will edit the detail on MD. Um, do we have an FAQ? There is an FAQ, and it has it. It covers topics that would, I think would be similar to this. So I, I, th I think it would be. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think we need security. to mention. Yeah, we don't need to mention security model. We should just mention what the behavior is expected to be from a client or registry perspective. Well, I think I, I, I think it's um, okay to add to the FAQ and be like don't do this if you're doing security and you care at all about confidentiality. Um, and here's why. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you're right. Those are two scary words to, to put in there. But yeah, I think that the FAQ is kind of designed to be, to help implementers a little bit. So kind of like an implementer's guide. So yeah, we don't need to put that in the official specification, which is very, we can be very literal about what what it does and doesn't do including it but I, I guess the faq would be like why is this optional uh for registries to implement and then the answer would be well there is problems with disclosures in security models with registries here and explain that and then we don't need to use the word security but we could talk about confidentiality and explain the security problem and then let people draw their own conclusions. Yeah, that, that, that all seems fine. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think just, it's it's more about just highlighting, it's it's very subtle if it's just like that one line, like if it's not found, like if it's found, it's, it's, it's pretty subtle to okay. the readers, I think. So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I I, the, the commit, talks about it but i think it makes sense to add it's fine to add to the FAQ. Read commit messages no i mean by the, like other code base i develop on it turns out that they don't have github so um yeah commit messages are the go-to but um the i think adding to the faq is fine i i and then adding to the i didn't even know about the detail about md but i can also add add to that is that generated or is that written by it was hand? generated at some point but it's no longer, it's, it's hand, hand edited. Cool. <laughs> it's pretty, uh, I mean, it's, it's basically the similar wording, just I think calling that out as uh, optional. Like, I don't know how much, I don't think more details necessarily need to be added there. I mean, I actually think that the, this is wrong. Oh, there's probably talk, stuff in there that's wrong. The, it doesn't talk about how, like, on failure, um, it invalid name or digest. Uh, no, it doesn't. It says, like, on failure, it should give a 400 bad request, not 202 created. Details yeah, that's part wrong. of the generated. That was definitely um because of how they were generated before but yeah we can clean that up too and blame john here right he was the one that edit, added the the on failure started an upload um i think we can blame we have a, a rule. handful of people <laughs> if, if you want to add something you have to fix it too uh i i i i can fix this one and then add to the faq um i will make the faq commit a discrete commit um and explain in the commit message why not add it to the thing because it turns out that capturing all the nuances is fairly difficult in this may be a detail or this may be details that are only interesting to implementers um and then i think i'll make a different commit to fix the detail first and then in this commit we can actually get the detail with the new terminology So does that sound like a good set of next steps for- Yeah, everybody? sounds good to me. Cool. 
I'm excited to see this get implemented. All right. I will give everyone time back. Yeah. We've got a